Well, good afternoon, Nancy. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me, Jocelyn. Yes, I am so excited that you are here on Confidence Conversations. We have so much to get into today. We do, we do. And it's good stuff. Such good stuff. Yes. So I'm going to start this conversation like I start all the rest, which is asking you, what does confidence mean to you? Uh, um, it means being true to yourself. It means being true to yourself and being able to, you know, regardless if you're feeling confident or not being aware of it and still, you know, having the tools to say, okay, how do I get me back to being confident? So it's knowing where you are. It's, it's almost more aligned with like self-awareness and, yeah. and then what do I get to, to get me to either if I'm feeling, you know, if I'm, yeah, I mean, and you know, when you're feeling too confident, when you got to check yourself and get back to humility, right? So right. having that self-awareness of, you know, am I, am I feeling like way too confident where I need to check myself? Or am I feeling like underconfident where it's like, what's up, Nance? Why, where, where's this coming from? So I think it's really aligned with self-awareness. Yeah, you raised a good point. There's like a fine line between confidence and cockiness. And it's really great to have that good mixture of humility, but also belief in yourself to, to really get you to where you want to be. And you're in an amazing place right now. You just <laughs> published your first book. Tell me all about it. Oh my God. It's so surreal. You know, we, we launched the book on Tuesday. So from now it's Thursday. So about two days ago. And, you know, I'm seeing the post people posting because they're getting the book, right? They're receiving the copies and it's so wild. It's so wild. Cause you know, this has been like, you know, we didn't just start this project like last month. So this is like months, you know, over a year of like, okay, from, you know, here we go. We got a manuscript, we got a deal, we got all this, like now we're too. Um, and it feels great. It feels, you know, it feels really good that launch day happened. It's out into the world. Um, yeah. and it seems to be really being received really well, which I'm so grateful for. Um, and it just feels good. It feels good to be like, my baby's out and she's growing and he's growing, you know? Yes. So your book, Say It With Me, is all about positive affirmations and speaking light into yourself. I think it's a great book for both children and parents. But can you go through what was the mindset that you were in when you wrote this book? Uh, I actually needed confidence when I wrote the book because I had written um, a board book and it was on meditation and it was beautiful. And that was a book that my publisher had been really interested in. So we were on that like board book meditation, breathe in, breathe out path. And I, I kind of sometimes like go into a place of like, oh my goodness, what if I'm a kind of like imposter syndrome? Like I'm just a one hit wonder. Mind you, I've been journaling since I was 13 and wanting this. And I just kept trying to get a second book, kind of just kept doing, doing it to it. And I was like, I'm a one hit wonder. That's what my story is going to be like, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I sat down and I was like, you know, what do I, I was, I was at home during this time with my son and every morning he would wake up I'd hear him get up in the baby monitor. I'd go to his room, knock on the door, open the curtains, change his diaper, and we'd start with affirmations. And as I was sitting at my desk, like literally right here, I was just like, what do I like, you know, is it affirmations, is it gratitude? And I just wrote our routine out, you know, like mommy comes in the store and I needed those affirmations. Yeah. And I needed those affirmations. So it was needing like, okay, I can write, I can do this. You know, I've, I've got this, but also like going through what, our routine is, which is I want to instill that tool, you know, in my son, in all children. I needed it as a child. And also when I became a mom, I needed affirmations desperately because, you know, you can read every parenting book in the planet. Nothing prepares you for the real moment where it's like, here you go. And then you're home and you're like, what? You know, I've underlined, I've circled, I've, you know, gotten... Nothing. What do I do? What do I expect? Exactly. I'm expecting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's no turn to page seven and reread. Um, yeah. and so I needed to do affirmations, you know, again, like, um, you know, I love myself. I'm doing enough. I'm okay. You know, just those types of affirmations. Um, so it was like a two for one. That's how I really view the book. It was for my son. It was for my younger self. It was for, for all of us. Yeah. Now I want to hear more about that journey of motherhood. So I'm not a mother myself, but time after time, I hear stories of women who do this incredible thing, right? You give life into the 
universe, but there's a piece of you that changes and you kind of have to reconcile with that. And so I want to know what that journey was like for you and kind of how you developed comfort and confident confidence in who you were after transitioning from woman to mother. Um, it's a very hard journey. It's a very, you know, at least for me, for me, it was a very difficult journey from, um, you know, things happen very quickly for, for me and my husband, you know, we, our first date was January 13th. We were pregnant by November, married by February, blended family. Sebastian came four months later, you know what I mean? So, and it was, it was a great romantic, beautiful time period. Right. But then that transition of boom, now I'm a mom and you know, it's not like you have a baby and then you just go back to work or whatever, you know, God willingly you, you have some time, but regardless, you're pausing for a moment, right? You are like complete, it is baby infant, like needs you all the time. And so for me, it was, it was hard because I, my identity had shifted in more ways than one. I had lived alone for 10 years in my apartment. So I had that independence, you know, if I, so I had to reconcile with all my identities kind of vanishing overnight. You know, I was a mother. I would now was a wife. I was a stepmom. I was, you know, living in the suburbs, like everything. So the one thing that did, you know, and I, and I, and then I became a stay at home mom for two years, you know, so I wasn't even teaching. So every, like, who was Nancy, you know, besides right. like, who knows who Nancy is? Nancy, I didn't even know who I was. Um, but the one thing I did know solidly, and I always say there's two things I know that I'm good at is that I knew I was, even if I, on my hardest day of judging myself as a mother, as feeling like I, there was a security and safety and peace of mind and knowing I, the love I feel for my son is like nothing else. And I've got him, I've right. got him and I've got his back. And I, I, I can't, I can take a day where I might be crying and whatever, but at, at the end of the day, I have to come back and you have to speak up. Like it changed me. It changed me in the sense that I, could, you know, things that I would be like, uh, I, I, I couldn't, cause I don't want to model that for him. It's like, here I am being like, speak up, use your voice, blah, blah, blah. I don't want him to ever be like, but mom, why didn't you say anything? Right. And so yeah. the transition was, I had a very hard time with identity. I had to, you know, go back to my tools, the affirmations, the meditations, therapy, journaling. I mean, all of it. Um, but the other transition was it made me stronger. It, made, it did make me more confident because I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. For me, for me, it was like, you know, you, you have to speak up about what's not fair. You have to speak up for yourself. You have to, you know, he's number one. So you, you, there's this different responsibility of making sure the world is way better than when he came in, you know? That's so, so crucial. And I'm so happy for you that you were able to not only get through it, but actually identify and pinpoint that issue. Because I think that so many people suffer through not even knowing what's going on or being able to identify the change. And so they suffer in silence. So thank you for sharing that and being super transparent about your journey. Yeah. Now, you've um, talked a bit about positive affirmations. Your book is full of them and I love it. Um, what are some of the affirmations that you wake yourself up with if they're not already in the book? Um, they're, they're not, they're, they're, they're a version of it, but for yeah. me right now, a version of it for me right now is I'm enough. I'm enough. I can do hard things. I've got this, I'm doing it. Um, but right now for it's been, I'm enough, um, because, you know, just launching a book, teaching mom, you know, just all the hats we wear as just being functioning humans, right? Um, it's so easy to feel like, oh, I'm only giving 20% here. I'm only giving 30%. And really no one is getting the best of me. You're just getting like pieces of me. And so pausing and just saying like, I'm enough. Like I am doing, right. I'm actually killing it, you know? But, but checking my ego to being like, no, 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 you're not winning today. Like I hear what you're saying and you, and you need love clearly. So I'm going to tell you that you're enough. And mm -hmm. so it's like me just saying I'm enough. Um, and you know, a lot of, this is a whole new uncharted world for me. So a lot of it can sometimes be scary. You know, I remember my first podcast, I was like, oh my gosh, like I was so nervous. Oh my uh -huh. God, I was so nervous. And I, you know, I was using the affirmation, I can do hard things. I can do hard things. Like I was like hyping myself, like I've got this. Um, yeah. So those two are really my, my big ones right now. 
I love that. I am enough. I think that that's one that we can all use at one time or another. And I know it's hard when we're juggling all of these various things in life to feel like you're not giving all of yourself in one area or another. But I think that it's so crucial to just realize that you're doing the best that you can in the moment and really proceed from there. Because a lot of times we are way too hard on ourselves oh and we don't give ourselves enough credit. So it's time to give yourself some credit. What have you been doing really well lately, Nancy? Oh my God. You know what I'm doing really well at? I'm doing really well at um, appreciating, of, of, yeah. of like, but of accepting, of accepting the, the love. I'm doing a really good job of accepting the love of just, you know, being humble in it, but really, instead of, you know, when someone gives you a compliment, you're like, oh no, but then you kind of contradict it with something that makes it like, and I've just right now just been like, thank you so much. Just saying the thank you. I'm really like, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, instead of, which is what I, what I would, my default would be like, it's not a big deal. Like, you know, like, and it's like, just me just being able to say, thank you. Mm -hmm. Accepting compliments is so huge. I, um, I struggled with that as well. And I used to downplay like everything that I did. And it's, it's nice to know that I'm not alone in that because we do, we downplay things. We say, Oh, it, this old thing, if it's a compliment on a shirt or like whatever it is, but being able to accept that and appreciate that. Yeah, you are awesome. You're not just doing great things, but you're awesome. You're doing hard things. You're looking good. <laughs> so that's, I love that. No, but Jocelyn, you're right. I mean, it's that, that downplaying the compliments. It's like, right. Someone compliments your shirt. You're like, oh, actually like I, you know, and instead of just being able to say like, thank you. Yeah. And appreciating yourself. I think part of that is kind of playing small or making excuses for why we are able to do certain things. So I want to know how you came to really own who you are as a woman, as a mom, as a wife and like how you really cultivate that confidence in your life every day? Um, the first answer that I wanna give, just because it came to me, which was very different than what I had originally planned to say, um, which is, no, is just accepting the layers of me, accepting that there are some things that I'm really great at. There are some things that I, I think are part of my lifelong journey that will always kind of be triggers or you know whatever that I'll have to be like, ooh. Um, okay but just accepting that I'm human, that I'm like, you know, we're, we, I'm this layer cake of 39 years, you know, I'm not just like suddenly a bright, shiny penny today. I'm like, I'm the best 39 right now, but I'm not, there's like 39 years in this of like me responding to this question, right? Um, and so that I think, um, number one, is really getting to know myself, really getting to like understand, be compassionate and kind to myself, realizing, getting away from the perfect. I used to, when I, if I told you how much I aimed for a hundred, which would then prevent me from even getting the project off the ground because yeah. forget it, it's not perfect. No, no, no. I wanted, I want the best. I want the best. I want the best. I want it to be. And then like being able to work through that and like, Hey, my 80% or is someone else's hundred. So just go for the 80, just get it done. Um, and, and just realizing, okay, like, where are you right now? Are you struggling through this? Like perfectionism, like get away from that. Cause once I start going for perfect, I am an anxious mess. I, you know, the, the little, ugh, I'm not the best Nancy. I have to apologize to someone at some point. You know what I mean? Like someone, I owe someone an apology when I'm going, when I'm in that mindset. Um, and then just the meditation, the affirmations, the time in my life that I can pinpoint, I was most authentically solid, solid, confident. Um, I was right before I met my husband. And so I'm about 36, 37. Um, and I, I, I keep saying I'm going to post a picture and I will. I literally had post-its in my mirror, okay, in my bedroom, in the bathroom, when you walked into the entryway and they were, I'm enough. I'm deserving of healthy love. You know, I can trust myself. I'm confident. Um, I'm secure in who I am. And, and they were just like repeated all over the place. You know, I'm beautiful, you know, inside and out, just all these things. And it was probably a year of for sure having them up and, you know, removing them whenever a date came over. So they don't think I'm completely like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, was, that was my thing. And then um, I, I, and I still have them because that was, I think for me, 
the game changer, the ultimate game changer for me. You know, it really is something about just seeing those positive words hung up around places. I did the same thing and you sent me some posts, so thank you. Um, but I remember a while ago, maybe like a year or two ago now, I had some post-its and I just got them one day and just started writing and putting them, like, it just was like something took, took over. <laughs> it was just putting them everywhere. And it feels amazing yeah. to just look at them, especially because when you're writing them, you, you kind of are on this, like, whole thing it's like a whole like it's a, a mind it's, a vibe. it's a vibe it's a total vibe yeah, it's a total vibe but then when you're out of that vibe and maybe you've had a rough day or you wake up in the morning and you're like oh like I'm so tired and you see that in the mirror it does something on like a molecular level I think the one that I had on my bathroom mirror was it's so great to see you Oh, and I would smile every time I saw it. I'm like, oh my God, it's so great. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. I'm going to tell my students to do that. I am. Uh, oh, I love that so much. My student recently, I had them, come, we have like a mirror in the classroom and someone said something and I go, you don't wake up in the morning and go look in the mirror and say, good morning, handsome or good morning, good looking. And they were cracking up and because they thought it was so silly. And I was like, that's what we're doing. Row one, come up here, go to the mirror. And they were doing that and they're, my, my student was like, that's a, I feel a little embarrassed in the stores. I was like, okay, you don't have to do it whenever you're ready. And by like the fifth student, he was like, I want to go. I want to go. Uh, yeah. Like, Good morning, rock star. And now I'm going to include, I'm so happy to see you. I love that so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's so awesome. I, Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you ever um, run out of them, I love, there's this product called Vision Words. She has like a set, I think like 10 different sets of wow. sticky notes pre-made that oh, wow. is like the coolest thing. Right. Um, but let's talk now about your time as a teacher because you are really helping mold young minds and it's not just teaching them, you know, the subject at hand. This is like a crucial and pivotal moment of their lives. So I really want to know how you use your time, the experiences that you've had as a human on this earth to really instill confidence in these young minds? Um, well, I'm very big on the social emotional learning. Um, more, you know, more so than at the start of the school year, whenever I get my, my new students, whenever a new class starts, my first, I wanna say month or so, we're focusing more on social emotional because I believe that if I get a solid as a family and, you know, we're a family for, you know, the school year, that's, you know, family. Yeah. And if I get us and we, we all begin to trust each other and we're forming community and we're form, forming this, you know, heart together, I'll teach you reading. I, that's my pathway to teach you anything academically, but I can't do it reverse. I can't teach you math and suddenly, you know, have you suddenly feel open to tell me something that's going on at home right. or talk to me about what's going on right now within something in the classroom or with another friend in the class. So I am always... You know, we started school this year and then we, because of COVID, right? Um, January is when we came back full time. And so the, the kids weren't used to, they, you know, they, this was a whole new group of kids and they're like, where's our homework? And I'm like, well, you know, on Friday, part of my homework was go have a dance party. <laughs> I love that. And like, literally that's what I'm writing to the parents, like have a dance party, like enjoy, go out, you know. And I, you know, had to do this whole meet and greet with the parents. And I was like, I just want you to know, I know we're, and they'd be like, are we having any like homework? I go, are your parents complaining? Are they like, what's up with Ms. Torres? And like, no real homework. They're like, no, but they are curious. And so when we had the meet and greet, I was like, I, we are going to get into it. I just, you know, with, especially with COVID, especially with the whole different look that the school has looked yeah. like this year, right? I was like, they are going through so much. I was like, I need us to get solid socially emotionally I was like trust me they're gonna we're gonna get to math and you're gonna be like oh my gosh this may be too much homework like what happened to Miss Torres um but but we're gonna get there and and they got it and they were with me and yeah. they were supportive um and the kids are fantastic like they yeah. I bring it I bring it and I bring it in a very transparent level where I'll share stories I think the best way to relate to kids is if you're real with them mm -hmm. like share your own personal stories we've been kids we go through something and when you use the I, like when I talk about my son or when I talk about my sister or when I talk, you know, something that we've gone through, 
you're no longer Miss Torres. You know, you're no longer the teacher who like, we've all viewed our teachers as like, yeah. And you're like, whoa, what? You're like you, you're, you're human. Like you're, you're not just like either a stuffy teacher or like, you're like relatable. Right. You humanize the human experience for them. And I think it's so funny, like whether it's your teacher or someone that you look up to, whomever, we have this tendency as human beings to automatically other those who are in different positions and not really see them as either human or just having the same feelings and emotions as we do. And that really helps to crack the confidence code, in my opinion, is when you put things into perspective. And especially when you're able to be vulnerable and transparent and put yourself on display like that, I think it opens up a whole new layer of trust. Um, I want to touch a bit on your social emotional approach because I love that. It's almost like Maslow's hierarchy of needs and really going from the bottom up addressing like you can't focus on your self-actualization needs until you've gone through physiological and all the way up the chart. And you're really able to walk your students up that hierarchy, kind of addressing their emotional needs. Before we can get to learning in the classroom, we have to feel comfortable where we are. We have to break through those mental roadblocks and mental barriers. And a lot of times those things are subconscious. They're not at the forefront, especially if you haven't been you know exposed to things like meditation or social emotional learning and that's like a whole new concept so you're feeling dis disturbed or diseased and i say people that like don't like the use of disease that way but disease is really the absence of ease it's diseased yeah. and you're feeling that and not knowing where it's coming from and i love that you address that so i want to kind of walk back for a second and really look at how you are able to address some of those barriers or what methods do you have to even understand kind of what's at the surface? Um, I start with journaling. That's my, that's my thing. And, and we start the day and I start um, every, every class that I've had, we start with a journal and the journal prompt is very simple. The first one is today I am feeling. And you know, at first kids are like, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to write. And I go, well then write, I don't know what to write. And then you, and I model this, I'm like, okay, so it could look like this. Today I'm feeling like I don't know what to write, period. I still don't know what to write, period. I still really, really don't know what to write. And by like the fourth or fifth sentence, they begin to like think of something, right? And so I think that's a very different approach that most students, you know, cause I'm like journal, when you're journaling, I don't care about your spelling. I don't care about punctuation. I don't care about just, I need you to write. Like this is the one area where I'm not gonna be a teacher and say, you forgot your uppercase or no punctuation here. And so the, the journaling is really like my entryway into being like, how can I connect with you? This is where you share with me the most random, like we had pizza for last night or I'm so tired because I woke up and my cat jumped on me in the middle of the night. You know, the most random, but that, gives me info on you. So when you're going through something or when you need, you're lacking connection, right? And you're feeling, I can go like, what's up with Sadie, your cat? Is she, did she like wake you up last night? And you're suddenly a little layer closer, right? right? Just about just getting, you know, this distance that you start with teacher, student, and then just getting it closer, just getting to know each other on a one-on-one -on -one level. Like, Oh, Miss Torres, you know, loves chocolate, you know, so-and-so, you know, Billy has like these two dogs who like chase, you know, I mean, just like ra the randomness that I can just insert either when you're not paying attention and I need, and you're suddenly like, wait, what you talked about, like, you know, or when I need to connect with you, but journaling is a really, really huge thing in my classroom because that's where they tell me, you know, something's going on at home and I, that's where I write back to them that, you know, I, this year, it's, it's a small class, it's 12 students, so I can read all their journals, um, their second graders, and just like write back and know what's up. They can also, when I had third grade and we had a regular size classroom, I would choose a table, you know, to, to like, okay, table three, bring me your journals. But I always had this thing that if you wanted Ms. Torres to read your journal because there was something I needed to know, just put a post-it, bring your journal, put a post-it and leave it on my desk. And that's where they would tell me if something was 
going on at home. Um, and I always say, you know, if something's up at home, let me know. I'm not going to be like, why didn't you do your homework? You can just say, hey, Ms. Roy, this is what, and I'll be like, okay, got it. Just like, you know, hand it in tomorrow or, you know, let's talk about this, whatever. So yeah. for, for me, the big, the simple, it's a black and white notebook. It's nothing fancy. You just write journal on, uh, where it says name and it's, that's the way I get in. Yeah. And I, I think you raise a really key point. And you talk about it in the context of teacher and student, but this translates to all relationships is that idea of creating a safe space for someone to share and then for you to be begin to be able to be vulnerable, to share and really have conversation and then build relationships. So I want to know, does this look the same in life or in what recommendations you have for people to actually build and facilitate healthy relationships with others? I think um, communication is key. I'm just thinking of right now my relationship with my husband and where do we, where do we have that safe space that the journal provides between teacher and student, right? And I think it's when we say when we just identify and say, "Hey, is it okay if I share something with you?" And that for us is like code of like, "I need you to be present. I'm sharing something with you that isn't just like, oh, you know, blah blah blah," and being like okay okay like i can i'm here um also being able to say hey like right like maybe later tonight right now i'm not able to be present for what you know I, and i want to be present for this but right now you know we got to get sebastian to soccer in 20 minutes and i have to jump on a call and you're you're you know so can we hold off and and being like you know and if it's not then being like okay priority you're, he's gonna run late to soccer let me just sign a quick message saying i'm running late but it's, it's whatever your sentence is with your partner um, or, and something I had read with a child that I thought was so cool was, and, and I think post-its are a classic because, you know, when I, I was thinking of what do I, what do I send with the book, right? And I was thinking, well, I was like driving myself going for that hundred, right? Or notebooks were going out and Michael's like, did you send the book out? And I'm like, no, not yet, but it's coming, right? <laughs> I was at Stables and I was like, oh my God, post-its. I mean, if you go on Instagram, like three years ago, there was Post-it City. Like you would have thought I was like, I had like affiliated with post it themselves. <laughs> um, but with something I had read with a child that I would definitely do with Sebastian is they said, put a post-it and say, give me this when I need to be reminded that I need to stay calm and cool for whatever you're about to share with me, because it's, it's so important and you're so nervous to share it with me. And so the child gives it to the parent and that's like your key of knowing, Hey, your child's about to disclose something really huge that they're scared and nervous. So you put yourself in that place of like, okay, I I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. you know, not do the, I can't believe you did that. Or why didn't you, you know, just do the, like, you're scared and I need to be your unconditional loving parent that is, that it's your parent. Yeah. So I think it's having, whether it's a sentence, a phrase, some exchange that lets the other person know, hey, this is, I need safe. I need a right. safe space. And can you be that safe space right now? And if you, and, and, let, and the other person being able to say, because again, life can happen, right? You can get that posted. And again, it's like, wait, like I, you know, I have my earnings call at the end of the year. I mean, I don't have any earnings call, but, but you know what I'm just thinking? <laughs> like, what does he say to me when he can't like be available to me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and being like, but I will once this call is over, you know? And so I think that that phrase, that way, that, that special thing that you exchange. No, I think that that's so important is what you raised, being able to express your needs and do so in a way that's constructive and conducive to a meaningful conversation. But I know that that is easier said than done. It is a lot harder to do, um, especially if you haven't been practicing that, being open and honest about your communication and saying, hey, I'm going to tell you something. This is what I need from you to make this a safe environment for me to share. So I wanna know, were you always this way? Were you always such a great communicator? How did you get here? No, I was not. I, you know, he, my, my Achilles heel, my thorn has always been relationships, romantic relationships. I, okay. so that's been, that's been my, where I've needed every tool and where, you know, interpersonal relationships with the people closest to me romantically. 
Um, and so with my husband and I, it took, you know, we started off really solid and being vulnerable and sharing and feeling safe. And it was like the most amazing thing either of us had ever experienced. And it was so cool, but then life happened, you know, and suddenly we were, you know, we were using these little things that we had learned about each other. And they were kind of like, we were poking with them. And that's not cool. You know, and, and then the whole safety got like, there was no space. And so we had to actually rebuild safety into each other. And so that, you know, that came along with therapy, you know, that came along with each of us checking in and being able to say, Hey, this, when you said that, that really hurt me. When you said that, that really hurt me. And I need to know that we're, 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 we're going to forgive each other, but really forgive each other and give each other the, um, like just have faith in each other again. We're going to begin to place faith in each other again. And slowly we began to do that. And there will still be moments where, you know, he'll say to me, Hey, this is just reminding me of like that time where this is just reminding me of, and, and me also now picking up on when he's going to a place of like, Ooh, or where I'm like, Hey, I, I hear what you're saying, but this is, this is what I'm, I, I know this isn't what you mean, but I just want you to know that this is what I'm hearing and I need yeah. insurance or something. And that was so hard for me to learn to express that, to express what is it that I need? Because I was almost raised in a way where like my partner should know, like, like, yeah. almost as if yeah. you're like, because they we should read each other. other's minds you should know we've been together don't you understand look at my face <laughs> yeah I know that we're married I'm your wife like I mean there was all these things and then just learning like I don't know half of what how he like I'm not reacting to where how he wants me like you know I'm not killing it on his game he's not like oh you're scoring 100 babe and like I'm like I don't understand like why I said it and he's like but you and so both of us being able to say to each other hey this is what I'd like to hear from you. This is what I need. And our therapist taught us this phrase that I think has really helped us, which is my longing right now is. Mm. And I, and yeah. right, it's so good. And it's so I'll be like, my longing is, because before I would either snap, I'd be very passive aggressive. I would be like, I, or I would just ignore my need or my want and I'd be like, forget it, it's fine. And we would all know in about, an hour or so it wasn't because then I exploded over something so ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Instead of, me just, saying, <laughs> instead of me just saying, Hey, that really hurt just now. Or like, yeah. Hey, and then him being able to like, say, you know, here, I'll give you a classic 30 second story. I'm driving home. I'm like, Hey, heads up. I have a five o'clock podcast, four 30, this four o'clock that I go, I really want to do the call in the living room, the podcast in the living room. So can you take Sebastian downstairs? He's, or I go, should I do it upstairs? And he goes, uh, well, you're, you, we can hear you in the living room. So I go, what do you mean? And he, he goes, well, we can hear you laughing or talking. Now we're upstairs. I, 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 how do you hear me? Right. And he goes, well, your voice is loud. I hear it as like, you're so loud. Like, oh my God. Right. And he wasn't saying that at all. So I go, cause I'm a jerk. Right. I go, well, the house is really poorly made. Okay. So now he's hearing. <laughs> so now he's, so this is what I heard. Right. Th those that's what we said this is what I heard I heard you're so loud like you're just like so extra and so loud that's not what he was saying he heard you built the my husband didn't build a house okay you we so and he was like I just kind of felt offended I was like babe you didn't build a house so I don't know how you can take offense to the house being poorly built like it's the I guess the acoustics or whatever and then we laughed about it because we were able to share with each other hey this is what I heard it's not what you said but it's what I heard to communicate that because I think that's where we often, there's a breakdown in communication. And I've learned that retrospectively, you know, hindsight is always 2020. Yes, yes. You know, I, I'd be perfect now. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> no, but I think it's so important to communicate what I'm hearing is, or I think Brene Brown used the story that I'm telling myself. Or in my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, that is good. <laughs> that is yeah. because it, it, there are all of these narratives that go on. And I think being able to, when you get into the habit of communicating, this is the narrative that's going on. You can also move back into the moment, right? Because you realize too, I'm creating a narrative. 
And so you're able to get back and say, okay, like, how does this person usually talk and communicate? Because everything is good with context. And so if you're able to put it into the context of that other human, you're able to really understand and be present in the conversation. But it starts, you can't even get there if you don't get into the practice of really getting an understanding of what the heck is going on. Oh my goodness, you just nailed it. You just, uh, that narrative that can so quickly be like, can, uh, you know, boom. It's like, this yeah. is what the story in my head is. And and it's like, no, nope, false. That's, yeah, that's not what I meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want to know, because we tell stories to ourselves all the time, whether it be in dialogue with another person or at work or, you know, taking on an adventure and dealing with imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of the listeners here struggle with imposter syndrome. So I want to know, what you have done to sort of make it through if you've ever even fall victim to imposter syndrome. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Imposter syndrome is something that um, I am very familiar with. And, and that was part of what the, how this book came about was because, you know, I had a publisher who was in, my publisher was interested in my first, you know, board book, breathe in, breathe out. And I was like, there's no way I can like, like what? And I was like, I have to do a second because then I was like, it was almost like I was too lucky. You know, this is right. like real. And so I've a hundred percent struggled with imposter syndrome. I think I even, part of the reason I feel so calm and peaceful right now is because the book has launched, it's Tuesday, it's out there, it's real. Um, and a tool that helps me is just checking the facts, simply just checking the facts, being like, okay, um, did you write a book? Yes. Are you an author? Yes. Like these are, these are all truths. This isn't a story I'm making up in my head. This is right. like, legit if someone was filling out a you know uh, like a paper on me this is what they would say nancy torres is an author and blah blah blah, blah. um so for me a really helpful tool is just fact checking is just fact checking um I love that. It's simple but it's just it just what helps me no that is a new one for me i i go back to like let's look at the things that we've accomplished and let's go through it but to phrase it like that fact checking super simple what have you done? I have done this. Yes. Gone through it. I have whatever certificate or degree or whatever it is. Check that box for yourself. But also know if you're in a place, it's not by mistake, it's by design. And so who cares if you don't have the degree even yeah. that other people have, or, you know, you didn't go to the program or whatever the heck it is. Like knowing that like you the boxes you check are your boxes. The journey you took, that's your path. Like where you are, that's where you are. Exactly. You deserve to be there. And it's by design that there's no mistakes there. It's not a mistake. And I think we get so caught up in looking and comparing and like that creature of comparison diminishes our own self-esteem because we're looking at, you know, we could be at the peak of the mountain and then still comparing ourselves to others. And it's like, girl, what are you doing? You just nailed it. You literally just nailed it. It is so easy to compare, you know, as much as I think social media is amazing. It, it's also, you know, it's both, it's both the good yeah. and the harmful because you can easily be like, oh my gosh, like inspiration, inspiration. And then the next minute it's like, oh my gosh, but I'm not doing this. And so on. So has this many followers and so-and-so, you know, has that blue check and so-and-so has this, like, you know, all this. And then, being like, hold on a second, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's check me again. Who am I? Go through the facts, you know, like, and just, just pausing, checking the facts and just realizing who you are aside from all these other things. Like what's really important? Look, me, I, you know, I, I am all these things, but what really matters to me is my heart is my intention. Right. So wherever I go, look, I may not, you know, I, I didn't go to Ivy's. I don't have, you know, all these different things, but I'll tell you who I am. I, you know, I've got a beautiful heart. I will give you everything I've got. I'm hardworking. I'm, you know, smart. I'm all these. Um, but knowing your truth, I think that also helps. Yeah. Knowing your truth. And I think also just being able to come to terms with the fact that we have accomplishments, we've done all these great things, but we're so much more than that. Oh my like, these labels that define us in all these areas of life, like I'm a woman, I'm 
Right. Uh, I'm not a mom, but like for you, I'm a mom, I'm a teacher, I'm a business owner, I'm an author, like whatever it is that those labels are that we identify ourselves with that then come with all of these stereotypes mm-hmm. or preconceived notions that we have to like filter and sift through and see where do I identify, where don't I, who am I? Because they're, we're not comfortable in like the multi-layered, multi-dimensional oh, 100%. fact of, hello, being a human. And that's it. That's exactly it. It's like, hello, we're human. Like, yeah. I am, you know, I am like this oval that's kind of like squiggly, kind of, you know, like there, there. I just kind of like, if yeah. I need to fit in there, I might just kind of squeeze myself in there. I might just easily yeah. go in the room. Like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're fluid. Yeah. And really being able to accept that and accept ourselves. And if you're having a problem doing any of that, I can tell you that say it with me, Nancy's new book is perfect for you. So Nancy, where can we buy the book and where can we follow you? Because you have such fun energy. We got to stay connected. I love it. I love it. You know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like we've got a thing, you and I, Jocelyn. Okay. So this is like lifelong. Um, yeah, you can find me at I am Nancy Torres. That's my Instagram handle. That's my website. Um, and you can purchase the book at wheatpennypress.com or Amazon or call your local independent bookstore and see if they're carrying it. Um, but yeah, those are the three places for sure. I love it. Well, say it with me. Thank you so much for being on Confidence Conversations, Nancy. Jocelyn, you're amazing. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for this and just so grateful to you. Thank you for everything. I will see you soon. Bye.